Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is part two of goal setting, how I go through it. Um, so if you guys haven't watched part one, go back to yesterday's video, watch part one. And I hope you guys are enjoying this. Again, comment down below if what your goals are, how we can help you achieve them. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Have a great one. Again, a blueprint just helps me get clear on the, about the obstacles I may potentially face and the resources I may need. It also will present me with ideas on how I can leverage my current environment to help me accomplish my goal. First thing I'd obviously look at is potential obstacles. And some of these things can include um, people, events, circumstances, fears, limiting beliefs, lack of experience or knowledge, um, you know, real estate investing, lack of funds sometimes. And, you know, events. A lot of people using COVID right now as an excuse for not hitting their goals. I think that's absolute crap. I think it gave you more time to do things that you should have been doing before anyways. Um, so don't use it, guys. If you guys are watching this, COVID's not, not an excuse, not anymore. Keep moving forward. There's ton, tons of opportunity out there right now. Let me know, what's, uh, you know which, what obstacles you're facing down below. And I, I, I truly want to help you guys succeed and hit your goal, okay? Uh, and, and most people don't take time to reflect on what could potentially go wrong. They don't account for Murphy's Law, right? Murphy's Law says whatever can go wrong usually does. So, so they're usually ill-prepared to deal with the situation when something goes wrong. And, you know, maybe the goal is you struggle for fear in certain situations and, you know, you want to overcome that fear. You know, and it's just creating that blueprint around that how, what that looks like. And maybe just breaking that down into tiny, tiny little steps. I come back to YouTube because this is very new for me still. And some of the like the new steps were, you know, I had no equipment when I started. Um, you know, so little steps are me picking up equipment every now and again uh, to make this better for everyone, right? Um, so every obstacle you face is nothing more than but a problem that you can work through. Uh, with the right resources and mental resourcefulness to pull it off. It's like every objection that I get um, is just somebody who wants to say yes, yet they have questions. Uh, so what resources do I currently have that will help me achieve this goal? What resources might I need to help me achieve this goal? How will I go about acquiring these resources? You want obviously a blueprint for building a supportive environment as well. So obviously an environment is the place where you live and work. And this of course encompasses all physical things that make up your environment, including people. So do you have a supportive environment? I mean, I have a bunch of friends who obviously like and comment on a bunch of my videos. Thank you everyone, uh, do it more. And yet, you know, does your current environment support the blueprint that you're gonna create and what might you need to do to change that? Uh, and you might have to make some modifications in your environment to optimize your actions and results. So questions I ask, does my environment uh, support the attainment of this goal? How does it help me? How does it potentially hinder me? Do the people in my life support the attainment of my goal? How might I need to modify my environment moving forward so that it supports all the work I'm going to do in pursuit of this goal? So remember that your environment must support all your actions and yet, it also has to be motivational as, as well as inspirational, and it must evolve as you grow towards your goal. So where you start today may not be where you end up tomorrow. And then obviously you need to outline who you're gonna become, right, in your blueprint. So your final task is to find who you will need to become along your journey as you work towards the attainment of your goal. And what specific habits do you need to develop or qualities do you need to adopt and beliefs that will support the attainment of your goal. And basically you need to adhere to a specific set of standards and these standards keep you on track. I used to say on my team that I never fired anybody. It was the standards of the team that if you didn't live up to or meet, then you were typically quitting because you there was clear standards and you chose not to adhere or follow or whatever it was, right? Given what I know now, what kind of person must I become to achieve this goal? What kind of habits and rituals must I build to achieve this goal? 
Um, I mean, one of the little things that I do every day is I read five pages of a business book or motivational book or a growth book, um, and I read a minimum of five pages a day because it's small steps. Sometimes I get into it and I read 20, 30, 40 pages. Sometimes it's just five pages because some of the books I find, not all of them yet, some of them I find that um, it's... Um, I find them very dry and very painful and it takes a lot of energy for me to read them yet I can always read five pages a day and that's just a habit that I've, I've gotten into uh, what kind of beliefs and quality must I adopt to achieve this goal what personal standards must I abide by to achieve this goal having a change gain some clarity about the person you need to become to achieve your goal your next step is drawing up a plan of action for the attainment of your goal so that's obviously step five. The final step of goal setting pr process involves drawing up a plan of action for the accomplishment of your goal. I'm not gonna go into huge detail yet. Your plan of action does not necessarily need to be all that detailed. It just needs to give you some direction. Use it as a guideline to help you get started along the journey to your goal. And again, if, if it's totally detailed, I gotta be honest, you're probably not gonna do it. Because what, what you're thinking today, you might get to step one and you finish step one and find out step two, three, four, and five either are unnecessary or you need to pivot and go and do step six and then do step four and then, you know, move that around. So, I mean, I don't clearly have that detail and by the way guys i'm not that detail oriented if you are i get it yet you have to be able to pivot within that um and again it's i get one step done okay great what's my next step and i do a weekly um check-in and say okay where am i on it what's the one thing i need to do to progress this for next week and obviously how to find motivation to achieve your goals um, I think motivation is a bunch of crap. I think anybody uh, with enough will, it's all willpower. If you have the willpower to do it, you will make it happen. And I call it willpower, not motivation. I, I've talked about this, it, it, kind of like the baby steps, doing the small steps, incremental. And it's kind of like act small, but think big. So think with the end in mind, yet what are the very, what the, what's the next step I need to do to get to that? Again, many people like to think big about their goals. It gets them all giddy and excited. However, big thinking can become very overwhelming experience. Um, like I said, I want to own a thousand units. Well, and then I was like, I just leave it. I have no plan. Well, the, the step is to go buy five units this year and, you know, plan after that. And uh, guys, gals, make goals fun and challenging. They shouldn't be super easy, yet... They should be fun. You know, it's a process of pursuing goals. Um, if you make it an enjoyable experience, you, the joy comes for me within the challenge, right? Uh, I mean, like, have you ever, it's like kind of like playing video games. Think about the games that you really enjoyed. You know, some of the games aren't super easy. In fact, some are, you know, you get to some levels and you just can't figure it out, right? You had fun, you enjoyed the process and that's what it is, right? It's enjoy the process if you're not enjoying the process then you're probably um going for the wrong goals get out of your comfort zone though like do get out of your comfort zone because once you you're it's like an elastic right you pull an elastic far enough it does never go back to its original shape it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and stretches more and more and more so when you stretch yourself in this way you learn and grow from that experience and this helps keep you interested and motivated over the long run so how can i make this pursuing this goal, fun and exciting. How can I potentially turn this goal into a game? Um, like for me, trading options, I kind of look at it as a game. Like people play Tetris on their phone or Subway Surfer. I don't even know anymore what they play, um, Candy Crush. And to me, my options trading is, is my video game on my phone. Uh, you know, how can I make pursuing this goal a little challenging? What will be the value of this challenge? How will it develop, help me develop and grow as a person, right? So we turn your goal into a game and, you know, goal is to win Monopoly. Well, 
it starts with the first roll of the dice and the and buying that first property and continuing to go around go. Uh, you know, to build lasting motivation, you need to continually make inroads towards your goal. Again, s steps, small steps, right? And you know, irrelevant tasks and activities can often sidetrack us. So when we get distracted, we lose focus and typically we stagnate. Um, and we no longer make for forward progress. So if we're checking in every week on our goal, then we can say, okay, we stagnated. What was that goal that we needed to achieve this week in order to move forward? Is that still the thing I need to do to move forward? What stopped me from doing it this week? And wh why am I going to do it this week rather than I, than I didn't do it last week? Or maybe it wasn't the correct step and I need to go back and say, okay, what's the step that's really going to get me closer to my goal. And, you know, it's the Pareto principle. I've talked about it before, but 20% of our activities are going to get us 80% of our results. You know, you guys can look up Pareto principle. We'll put a link down to it below. Um, you know, some, you know, so when I get distracted, some of the questions I ask is, is this task of critical value or is it simply a distraction? So when I go back and I haven't hit my goal for the week, um, this is what I'm asking myself. Is this task getting me closer to my goal or pulling me away? Is this the most valuable use of my time right now? Where could I focus my time and energy to garner the highest returns? So find your inspiration, I guess. Uh, we need motivation to keep up focused, to keep us focused in the present moment and inspiration to keep us focused over the long run. And I think it's kind of willpower i mean you can go and do a vision board like if you have your goal in front of you the vision board again you're going to check in with it basically daily i mean if you talk about uh david david goggins he has the account accountability mirror that he checks in with that he holds himself accountable to how are you going to hold yourself accountable to those goals where are you going to put the inspiration so you're going to have a vision board um, you're going to have a mind map poster like there's online programs that you can do the mind map poster with right now and basically do a brain dump, right? And then obviously generate a sense of urgency. By setting a timeline to it, you're gonna set, create a sense of urgency. And by checking in with it daily, weekly, monthly, you're gonna be able to take those steps along. What frequently happens, so on the surface, it might seem like an impossible objective, right? We might create a goal so big, yet if we chunk it down to a reasonable time frame, so again, my goal is to retire and I'm starting from zero is 10 years enough time. I think it clearly is. There's tons of people who've done it. What frequently happens is that that task often expands to fit the time frame we have set for the accomplishment. All work expands to fill the time allowed. So if I give myself an hour to do a task, it's going to fill that time. I think the biggest thing to do this, to, to have with this is find yourself an accountability partner, somebody who maybe they don't have the exact same goals as you yet, they have goals in other areas of your life that help you attain yours. So if one of your things is, again, to get fitter, then maybe you find an accountability, a gym partner. So you're going to show up at the gym. You don't, you, you're more likely to show up and do that exercise if somebody's with you because you don't want to let that other person down. All right. And it's the exact same. So take, take on an accountability partner who keeps you accountable for your action. And just say, this is the one thing I'm going to do this week to help me achieve this goal. And they can check in and say, you know, send you a quick text on a Wednesday. Say, hey, have you hit, have you done that yet? And you're like, oh crap, no, I haven't. And it's just that little thing that might trigger for you. Obviously the person you choose for this role should be someone you respect and admire. And, you know, somebody who's actually going to hold you accountable and not just say, you know what? It's okay. You had a tough day today. Don't worry about it. Your goals that they're basically telling you your goals aren't important anyways. And you got to build momentum, you know, where you start today. It's, it's kind of like you push a snowball down a hill where it's snowy, obviously, and it gets bigger and bigger, the more it rolls down and it starts going faster, the more it goes down the hill. It's the exact same thing with starting from scratch with a goal. And obviously you're building new habits and rituals. And these habits will either support your goal you're working hard for, or they hinder your progress, progress, sorry. And it's absolutely critical that you become aware of your behaviors and quickly make changes if for any reason they don't support your goal. 
consist so lastly, what daily habits and rituals do I consistently indulge in? Do these habits and rituals support the goal I'm working towards? And how specifically do they support my goal? And how specifically do they hinder my goal? And what changes might I need to make moving forward? You know, so having answered these questions, you should now have a better idea of what habits and rituals you might need to do moving forward. And some of that could be a morning ritual. I mean, that's the thing. I read five pages of a book every morning. Um, I typically exercise for an hour every morning. Some of the ways to develop these habits and rituals, what specifically am I working towards? So my goal, what tasks and activities do I need to focus on to achieve this goal? So if this is my daily ritual, I'm looking at, okay, what today do I need to do to help advance me towards that goal? What helpful habits or rituals could I build that support those tasks and activities. So while answering these questions, consider habits and rituals that will keep you inspired, focused, productive, energized throughout the day. And then obviously create daily reminders. Um, you know, one of my daily reminders that comes up is um, my goal is to inspire people to learn about finances and learn about um, wealth so that they can retire or they can live the life that they've always dreamed of. So guys, I'm going to end it there. Um, this is a long one. We're going to do this. Obviously this is the second part um, and they're both pretty long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, I can continue to talk about this subject. So let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your goals. Let me know what your deadline is. Again, if you liked it, destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you're one of the 60% who are watching this that haven't subscribed, super easy guys. Just click the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell for when the, uh, the videos come out so you're seeing them immediately. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great one. Bye guys.